a special rebroadcast for the American Armed Forces and their allies. You're invited to drop in where the elite meet to eat, Duffy's Tavern. Hello, Duffy's Tavern, where the elite meet the eat. Archie the manager speaking. Duffy ain't here. Oh, hello, Duffy. Tonight, uh, Adolph Manjo. Adolph Manjo. Well, you remember Theta Barra? <laughs> well, uh, Manjo was a fashion plate when she was still a dish. <laughs> yeah, he's a terrific guy, Duffy. Uh, very suave. Huh? Your wife says you're suave? Duffy, she means a big, fat suave. <laughs> uh, you know who else is coming down here tonight, Duffy? Uh, that French dame, uh, Yvette. Yvette. Y-V-E-T-T-T-T-E. <laughs> yeah, she's a female chanteuse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she sings, too. Uh, huh? Duffy? Oh, well, Duffy, I gotta go now. You know, uh, Clancy the cop. Yeah, Flatfoot Clancy. Uh, well, the club he belongs to is having a meeting here tonight. The name of the club? The, uh, Policeman's Tuesday Night Foot Bath and Discussion Club. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Adolf Munch is gonna give a lecture on men's clothes. I'm, uh, writing it for him. Yeah. <laughs> I call it Men's Fashions Through the Ages, from the fig leaf to the BVD. <laughs> okay, well, I'll call you back, Duffy. <laughs> Uh, don't bother me, Eddie. I gotta finish writing this lecture now. The well-dressed man must watch out how he garbs himself because he is always judged by his garbage. <laughs> Since from time in memoriam... Uh, Mr. Archer, just, just a minute. Uh, you writing a talk on men's clothes? Yeah. For Adolf Manju? Yeah. Excuse me. Eddie, to any other man, that would be an insult. Mm. To any other man, I'd apologize. Accept it. You talking about clothes. Look at you. Your hat's bashed in. There's a rip in your pants. Gravy on your shirt. A hole in your socks. Well, Eddie, I'm wearing sports clothes. Uh, <laughs> besides, it is uh, unde rigueur to uh, look too spick and spat. Uh, a man's clothes should have an air of... Ca carelessness, uh, casual. Mm. Oh, yeah. That's why you look like a casualty. <laughs> right. Yeah, I've always been a snappy dresser, already. When I was a kid, you know what the gang on the block used to call me? Archie the Fop. And why? Speech impediment? <laughs> no, because I was always so well-broomed. Always, uh, <clears throat> always first with the new styles. <laughs> I remember I was the first guy in the block to come around with two-toned sneakers. Uh, and very fastidious, Eddie. I was the kind of a guy, you know, if me collar got dirty, I changed the whole shirt. <laughs> now, uh, just because I don't look like I'm standing in Taylor's window like a dummy... The heart. Oh. <laughs> Hello, Finnegan. Finnegan, uh, is your Taylor's name Sam? So why, I... Uh... I think he made the pants too long. Uh, Finnegan, you can't even see your shoes. So I'll uh, tell you the truth, I'm trying to hide my shoes, Art. Why? So well, I'm a little ashamed. Two of the buttons is missing. <laughs> Finnegan, are you still wearing button shoes? So well, Art, I can't get new shoes on account of this rationing. Well, what's the matter? Ain't you got an 18 coupon? Yeah, but what good is it? I wear a 12. <laughs> Finnegan, that's got nothing to do with it. You could have got your right size and taken your change in red tokens. Uh, 
But outside the shoes, you look very nice, Finnegan. Yeah. That, uh, that bow tie. Very smart. Oh, get something I threw on. Yeah. Oh, it's very nice. Goes with everything. You could even wear a shirt with it. <laughs> hey, that's a very good idea, Raj. You're just a guy to help me with my problem. Uh, what's the problem, Finnegan? Oh, well, look. Someday I get a full dress suit. Should I wear gold studs or silver studs? Uh, full dress suit. Well, it all depends, Finnegan. On what? On how much they want to spend on you, Fiono. <laughs> Fiono? Who's that? <laughs> you are. Oh. Well, we all got to go sometime. <laughs> Look, Finnegan, don't bother me now. Tell Adolf Manju your trouble when he gets yeah, here, huh? Yeah, yeah, I will. I say, Archie. Uh, yeah, Miss Duffy. Uh, what's this I hear about a new French singer coming down here? So what about it? Well, if you're going to hire a singer, what's wrong with my singing? Just two things, Miss Duffy. And they're both adenoids. <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, don't say I didn't warn you, Archie. Papa hates French chanteuses. Eh, he don't like nothing unless it's an Irish tenor. Play a Caruso record to him. You got to tell him it's John McCormick. <laughs> that dopey, stupid Duffy. Now, just a second, Archie. Don't forget that stupid as he is, you are talking to my father's own flesh and blood. Hmm. Granted, but why does he have to have such a maniac over Irish tennis? Ah, uh, because he's sentimental. Such a sweet old softy. You should see him when there's an Irish tennis singing on the radio. He melts. I have even seen him stop hitting Mama till the song was over. <laughs> yeah, and he's right, because the Irish are the best singers in the world. Now, wait a minute. That's a very broad statement. Don't forget that there are Russians and other creeds who are uh, pretty good singers, too. What about Tolstoy? <laughs> uh, well, yes, Tolstoy. Uh, but that's only one case. What about Galakirchi? What about Galakirchi? Well, wasn't he a great singer? Well, certainly Galakirchi was a great singer. And where did Galakirchi come from? From Italy. Well, Italy is not Russia, is it? No. Well, there you are. <laughs> there I am where, Miss Duffy? Well, if Italy is not Russia and Galakirchi came from Italy, how can you say that Tolstoy is a better singer than the Irish? <laughs> Would you mind playing that back again? <laughs> no, you better not. Look, Miss Duffy, I didn't say that Tolstoy is a better singer than the Irish. All right. Go ahead. Go ahead and get a Russian. Go get Galakirchi. <laughs> if I did get Galakirchi, your old man would want him to sing Wee Wee McCree. <laughs> Archie, the name of the song is Wee Wee Mother McCree. <laughs>
Letty, I got to get this lecture finished for right out, mind you. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Who's that lovely dish coming in, Eddie? Uh, I think that's that French singer you'd expect, Miss Yvette. Oh, what a hunk of French pastry. <laughs> Uh, good evening, Cherie Mamsel. Uh, leave me bid you besame mucho. <laughs> Merci, monsieur. Well, the mercy is mutual. Uh, <laughs> vous êtes très revisat. <laughs> vous êtes gentil, monsieur. Où avez-vous appris parler le français? Oui. <laughs> <laughs> monsieur n'a pas compris ma question. Oui. <laughs> uh, Parlez-vous français? Oui, notre mot. Très bien, monsieur. Uh, I bet you make me feel right at home. Why? Are you French? A part. Only a small part, of course. Mm. Was your mother French? My mother was French, yeah. And your father? Uh, French, too. Oh. Well, then, uh, why are you only part French? Well, we were a very large family. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but... <clears throat> I was brought up talking French, you know. I remember, I was 15 years old before I learned to say hot dog instead of crepe Suzette. Are you the manager of this tavern? Yeah, I'm Archie, the maid of D. Excuse me, Mrs. Vest. Who are you? I'm Eddie, the waiter D. Eddie, please, one does not interrupt a teat of teat unless one wants uh, all of one's teeth knocked out. <laughs> But the customers would like to hear Miss Yvette sing. Oh, uh, Mademoiselle uh, Yvette, uh, voulez uh, chanter us a small shanty? Uh, Monso Venuti. We oui, art. Uh, 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 si vous uh, play a number for Mademoiselle Yvette? Okay, fellas. Attention. Un, deux, trois, go. <laughs> Cathedral bells were tolling And our hearts sang on Was it the spell of Paris Or the London dawn Who knows when we shall meet again But when the morning chimes Ring sweet again Sweet again I'll be seeing you In all the old familiar places That this heart of mine retraces All day through In that small cafe The park across the way The children's carousel the chestnut trees so wishing well I'll be seeing you in every lovely summer's day in everything that's light and gay I'll always think of you that way I'll find you in the morning sun and when the night is near I'll be looking at the moon, but I'll be seeing you in every lovely summer's day, in everything that's light and gay. I'll always think of you that way. I'll find you in the morning sun. And when the night is new, I'll be looking at the moon, but I'll be Ah, that was great. 
take it, Vet. You know, we ought to have a dame like that singing the joint regular, Eddie. You know, she could have packed the French crowd. Yeah, she's already... She's already doing it. Here comes Mr. Adolph Mons, you now. Well, Adolph... Well, Mr. Manju, uh, Duffy's is indeed proud to welcome a man of your distinguished haberdashery. Uh, <laughs> and furthermore, it is with uh, humble hospitability that we uh, police our extenditations to your august uh, presence amidst these circular glooms. Uh, what is this, a filibuster? Uh, what's a filibuster? Well, it's a speech about nothing made by a guy who knows all about it. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine meeting Adolf Manchu in person. You know, I never missed uh, one of your pictures. Well, it's nice to meet one of the paying public. Well, you didn't make much off of me, you know. <laughs> During most of your career, I got in for half price. <laughs> Archie. Archie, please. Never mind... Uh, never remind an actor of his age. It's tough enough to face the fact that I'm nearing 39. <laughs> 39. What is this, your second time around? Hi, <laughs> uh, can I ask a math question oh, now? Oh, yeah, Mr. Uh, Maggio, uh, this is Clifton Finnegan. He, uh, he has a problem. I'll say he has. <laughs> uh, well, Mr. Maggio, uh, here is my problem. Uh, when I get my full dress suit, uh, should I wear gold studs or silver studs? Well, you know, that varies according to the taste of the undertaker. <laughs> undertaker? That's just what Archie said. To Mr. Manjo, this full dress suit is going to be for me wedding. A wedding? Yeah. Well, is it an afternoon or an evening affair? Oh, I expect it to last longer than that. <laughs> just a second, Finnegan. When are you getting married? Oh, just as soon as I get the license. Well, congratulations. Where, where did you get the girl? Don't they give you that with the license? <laughs> and thank you, Clifton Finnegan. <laughs> hey, uh... hey, Dolph, uh, talking about clothes, uh, that's a nice-looking suit you got on there. Buy it new? No, no. No, I had it made. Yeah, you have to have a maid, huh? I don't. I just walk into a store, put on a 38 suit, have the sleeves lengthen, lengthen the pants, take in the waist, pad the shoulders, reset the buttons, and walk right out with a suit, a perfect 38. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I have to have mine made. I guess I'm just a misfit. Yeah, I guess you are, then, huh? Well, uh, the one you look, uh, the one you got on there looks pretty good. How do you get that nice, sharp crease in the pants? Well, I have a smooth mattress. Yeah. <laughs> I use a damp cloth and a hot rock. Uh, what do you use for a damp cloth? That uh, shirt you're wearing? Well, I was just waiting for you to notice this shirt. Uh, how do you like it? It's lovely. What color was it? <laughs> I don't remember, but it's nice material. Beautiful material. Feel it. Mm-hmm. Uh, broad cloth. Yeah. Yeah, but what's the difference? It's a man's style. Uh, uh, like I said in the lecture I was well, writing here. Well, well, if it is me old friend Archie. Well, Officer Clancy, uh, excuse me a minute, Tom, I'll be right with you. Clancy, I ain't seen flat in the foot of you in weeks. <laughs> Glad to see you. Well, it's lucky I am to be here. What do you mean? Well, this morning I was on duty, taking a little nap in the back room over at Grogan's, uh -huh. when a terrible thing happened. What happened? Grogan's kid sneaked me black back out of me pocket and hit me over the head with it. Well, gee, that could be serious, Clancy. It was. It broke every cigar in me hat. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you're here. What about the rest of the cops in the club? Are they coming? Of course. Uh, how many? Sixteen of them just came in through the back entrance. What other way? Uh, yeah. Sixteen? I, I thought there was going to be nineteen. Well, a few of the boys couldn't show up. You see, the commissioner has ordered a drive against Bookie. And the boys are busy placing some last-minute bets. Oh. Uh, well, Archie, when are you starting your lecture? Well, I need uh, to... Say, Archie, I have to be running along now. But, Adolf, you can't go now. You can't get the lecture. Well, what lecture? A lecture on clothes that you're going to give to the cops. I wrote it for you. 
You wrote a lecture on clothes? For me? Look, Adolf, uh, maybe I look like a bit of a slob now, but uh, remember the old pervert. The, the, the hole in a man's pants is not the window to his soul. <laughs> So what do you say? No, definitely no. No, huh? Uh, hmm. Archie, Archie, let me handle this. Uh, Mr. Minju, is that your automobile outside? Yes. Parked next to the hydrant? Next to the hydrant? My car's parked at least 20 feet from the hydrant. Okay, we'll move the hydrant unless you would like to proceed with the lecture. And your point is well taken. Where's the speech? Well, uh, Adolf, uh, have you looked over that lecture that I wrote? Yes, Arch. Well, tell me, uh... What do you think of it? It would take the heart out of Schaffner and Marx. <laughs> that is a very corny insult. Now, uh, I write them, you just read them. Read the lecture. Now, Clancy, uh, start the meeting, will you? Okay, Archie. Here we go. <whistles> the meeting of the policeman's Tuesday night foot bath and discussion club will now come to order. I now present Mr. Adolf Minju. No record. <laughs> Uh, gentlemen, uh, leave us begin our discourse appertaining to men's sarti, sartioriality. Archie, sartioriality. Yeah, men's clothes. What'd you think it was, a barber shop? <laughs> uh, proceed ahead. Mm -hmm. The first clothes that was known to primitive man was loincloth. But loincloth was difficult to get because loins is very ferocious beast. <laughs> They, uh, they do not stand still while you take off their cloth. <laughs> so, uh, primitive man was dressed very naked until the invention of the sheep. The skin of the sheep is very valuable. From the outside, we get wool, and from the inside, we get diplomas. <laughs> Archie. Archie, this is abominable. Yeah, but you ain't come to the best part. Continue. <laughs> well, the, uh, greatest step in clothing was the invention of the cotton gin machine. A machine for removing the gin from cotton. <laughs> well, previously, on account of the cotton being full of this gin, it was good for nothing. But after Eli Whitney's invention, cotton became the equal of wool, which never touched the stuff. <laughs> Archie, where do you get your facts? Research. I dreamed them up. <laughs> Go ahead. And now we come to chapter two, proper dress for policemen. Foot patrolmen should have their shoes stretched so they are large and comfortable. Mounted uh, patrolmen will require other adjustments. Stop it, Minju. You're a bum. What's the matter, Clancy, you um, bum? <laughs> Why, the man that wrote that lecture should be thrown in jail. Who is the culprit? Uh, wait a minute. Not a minute. Not a word, uh, Adolf. Let's stick together. Uh, neither one of us wrote it, Clancy. Uh, it was wrote by an expert. Who's the expert? Let me at him. Let me at him. Well, we ain't sure, Clancy, but uh, I think I know how I can find out, uh... I would like to ask the assembled crowd here one interesting question. When wearing a full dress suit, does one wear gold studs or silver studs? Uh, uh, that depends on the taste of your undertaker. Here's your man, Clancy. Uh, Take him away. Do nothing. Before we leave Duffy's, leave us put a couple of nickels in Duffy's jukebox. The plat is spinning. The needle comes down, it's music. <laughs> 